What's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? Your boy Dreadman is back, and I figure I got the appropriate attire on because it's time for the biggest epic fails of 2020. Now, people who know me know that I've been doing this series for the past 11 years. My very first one was uh, 2009. I've done it every year since, so I wanted to keep the tradition. But, woo! 2020 has been a year for the books. And the thing is, with, with, with it being 2020 and with so much chaos and so much discord of happening this year, I don't even know where the hell to start, to be honest. I mean, with the, you know, with these riots and with our president being stupid and these celebrity deaths and with COVID and, and you know, pretty much the world being shut down for the better part of a quarter of the year, I don't even really know where the hell to start. But one video enough doesn't do this justice. I'll tell you guys what I'm going to do. As I'm recording this video, it is 7.25 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on uh, December the 30th. I'll tell you guys what I'm going to do. I'm going to go live New Year's Eve at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm going to do a one-hour live. So I want, you to join me. I want you guys to join us for me. I'm going to do a live called 2020. The Good, the Bad, and the Flat Out Ugly. Join me, join me for that and then we can talk more on this. But anyway... Uh, the biggest epic fails of 2020. First off is the obvious one. COVID-19, the coronavirus. Now, I, I, I much like everybody else, when, when this whole first thing started, I thought that this whole thing was, was like blown out of proportion. I thought that people were making more of it than what it really was. I mean, I still kind of think that to a certain extent, because if you think about it, COVID doesn't really affect too many. I mean... It affects everyone. I mean, I'm taking safety precautions just like everyone else is, but still, COVID only really had any fatalities with the elderly, uh, babies, you know, infants, people with pre-existing health conditions like AIDS, cancer, you know, lung disease, like something like that. But the way that the COVID situation was handled in certain places was just ridiculous. Now, I do agree with the partial and the full quarantine, but with the way it was handled in, in, in certain countries, it's just ridiculous. I mean, also... Patient zero, you know, the, like I said, the coronavirus has been around for a while, but this new strange has been around only until recently, you know, because the thing is, it can be transmitted like SARS. It can be transmitted through, you know, being in close contact, touching basically any other airborne sickness or virus. It is a virus, so protect yourself. But yes, patient zero, you, for whoever the hell patient zero is, you pretty much just screwed the whole entire world. And for the government and the powers that be with the way that they handled this COVID situation, epic fatal. Now, our president, well, now our former president, Donald J. Trump. Uh, he has been at the top of everyone's shiznit list for about the past four years or so. I mean, it seems like that there's nothing this man does. I mean, it seems like that he intentionally tries to make people hate him or not like him. And guess what? He's done a hell of a job making that work. But with the way he handled the COVID situation and with with pretty much everything that he's done in the past, or you can pretty much say everything that he hasn't done in the past half a decade, you can pretty much contribute every last failure to him. Now, I'm not saying that it's all his fault. No, 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 it's not. Because, like I said, I don't really identify one political party over the other one. I'm just saying that he could have handled things a lot better, especially with the way that this country, that other than the United States of America, especially with the turmoil and the division this country has suffered in the past couple of years. So, Donald Trump, for a long laundry list of things, <laughs> epic fail. Next, uh, our U.S. justice system. This year, is, I mean, it, it, what a way to start off the decade, right? Because from 2010 to today, there's been a total of 562 counts of police brutality, unarmed men and women being shot and killed by the police, and that's just the ones that we know of. So, yeah, our U.S. justice system, there, there has to be some kind of, 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 of fair checks and balances. Rest in peace to George Floyd, rest in peace to Breonna Taylor, rest in peace to anyone and everyone who lost their lives and had their lives cut short by police brutality. But yes, the U.S. justice system and the U.S., like, they, the justice system and our um, police system, there has to be some form of accountability. Now, is everybody who the police shoot at, you know, wrong? I mean, I'm pretty sure that, like, not everybody who has been shot by the police is innocent. I'm 100% I'm sure about that. But 
You can't just go, if you're a police officer, your job is to protect and serve. You can't just go around shooting first and asking questions later. It, it, do, it doesn't work like that. You're, you're a, um, if the police is a government job, you are in a position of power. And we all know powers, power corrupts and uh, people do abuse their power. But the thing is, they need to be held to the same accountability as everyone else. I mean, if you're given that power and you abuse it, then guess what? You should be just as guilty as the people that who you're trying to execute. You can't if you're a police officer, your job is just to protect the innocent. You if you're a police officer, you can't play judge, jury, and executioner. Now, even as a black man, I know that not every black person is innocent, and I know not every bad every cop is bad or is racist or is, is corrupt. I know that. But I'm just saying there has to be a system of accountability in America. And with the way it is, I mean if you look if you can if you compare the United States of America to every country in the world, we got the highest police brutality rate in every single country. I guess it's because other countries really do know how to handle people who are actually guilty, and they look more into it. And shoot, some some countries they really do have their own system of accountability. A lot of them will just execute you right there. But I mean, America has been doing that, but to a lesser extent. But they're not even one hundred percent sure if the, if the perpetrator is guilty or not. So to our U.S. justice and police system, until you get it right, epic fail. Next up, uh, Doja Cat. Now, for people who don't know, earlier this year, Doja Cat had made some um, questionable and prejudiced statements regarding um, black men, as if black men don't have enough problems in America, but I'll get to that in another video. But uh, yes, um, basically what she was saying is basically she, she's denouncing her black side and, you know, she's more... The thing is, she was caping and basically pandering to her white male audience. So, there's always that. But, a lot of people feel like that she recovered from this, and people feel like that she should have been forgiven for it. I mean, but you know what that, guys, you know what that, you know what that saying, you know how the saying goes. Time heals all wounds. But guess what? We didn't forget about you. We really did not forget. So, Doja Cat, epic fail. Now, this is my favorite one. I couldn't wait to get to this one. <laughs> the Will Smith, Jada Pinkett, August Alcina entanglement situation. <laughs> Woo, boy. I can make, I've made two different videos on this. One on my Facebook Live and one I posted directly on here. But I've, I've went back and forth and decides who has more of the blame to take than the other one. And I'm going to say that they all should take the blame equally. Will should take the blame for allowing it to go on, going on in his house. Two, for Jada... For be messing around with a sick person like August in the first place. And three, August for not knowing his place and standing in his lane and catching feelings for somebody who he was just a, a side lover for. So all three of them have equal responsibility in this little entanglement situation. So, yeah. Um, like I said, you know, everybody's saying, well, I don't really think anybody should be blamed because Jada and, uh, Jada and Will have, have had an open relationship for the better part of 35 years. Yes, they have. But I, what I'm saying is, is that there has to be, even even in an open relationship, there has to be some limit. There's got to be some line. There's got to be something that, that, there has to be some kind of balance in that. Because, I'm going to tell you guys this right now. I saw the interview with Jada and Will, and when she looked Will dead in the face and says, Well, it's been so long since a man's made me feel that, feel that good. It's been, a, it's been years since a man made me feel that way. If Will Smith came out of his mouth and said, well, Jada, you haven't been making me feel good lately. I've went to another woman and she made me feel the way that no other woman has made me feel in the past 20, 30 years. If Will Smith said that, social media would be coming for Will's neck. They wouldn't let him live it down. They would want, you know, all, you, all you would see over Twitter and Instagram is hashtag cancel Will Smith. So, yeah. But anyway, Will, Jada, August for your entanglement situation, epic fail. Now, Nate Robinson. <sighs> the Nate Robinson Jake Paul fight was announced to be on, you know, the co main event of the Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. card, which was which was a brilliant fight, by the way. At least, you know, for two guys in their early fifties. But yes, Jake you know, Jake Paul and um and Nate Robinson were going back and forth on social media, so they decided to challenge each other to a boxing match. And lo and behold, Within the first couple of minutes of the first round, 
Um, Nate Robinson is like, what the hell did I get myself into? And we know exactly what the hell you got yourself into at the end of the second round. You were kissing the canvas the same way that August was kissing Jada. You were unconscious, my boy. Now, I will give you credit. You had, as a professional athlete, for you stepping into a completely different realm than what you used to, at least you had the balls to do it. But, um, I, I mean, there, there really is time when you got to put your pride aside. I mean, I'm not going to risk CTE and long-term brain damage for a couple million dollars. And, I mean, because once you get knocked out, that shit's on the internet forever. Like, you're, you're never going to live that down. I mean, sure, people will forget about it. I mean, you know, later on, I mean, later they will forget about it. I mean, because, come on. Look at the Twisted T situation. <laughs> I'm going to get to that. But, yeah. Uh, Nate Robinson, I will give you credit for stepping in the ring and stepping out of your lane to try to, to, try to try to prove a point. But because you lost in such a humiliating fashion, epic fail. Now, Josh Norman getting ran over by Derrick Henry. Short, sweet, and to the point. You guys can look up the, the clip on YouTube. Josh Norman is known for being a cocky and outspoken um, cornerback. For the Buffalo Bills, and he's been with he's had a stint with the Washington Redskins, now Washington football team, and he's had a stint with the um, with the Carolina Panthers. He got the brilliant idea to try to tackle six foot three, two hundred and forty five pound Derrick Henry, and he paid for it. He paid the ultimate price for it. He wasn't really hurt or seriously injured, but however, he did get his soul and his pride took in as a man. So yes, Josh Norman, for you getting ran over by Derrick Henry. And it very well could happen again in the 2020-2021 playoffs. Epic fail. Now, last but not least, the Tory Lanes Megan Thee Stallion shooting situation. Uh, I, I, I mean, because look, look, with the way, with, with, see, that whole situation happened when when I first heard about it and when I first saw the footage. There was a lot about it that wasn't adding up. Um. If you just look at, I mean, like, look at Tory Lane's live and when he explained himself and then look at Megan Thee Stallion's live. There's a lot of, you know, and the thing is, this is still a pending trial, too. And, you know, Tory Lane's and uh, Megan Thee Stallion still do have to go to court for this. There's still an open case on this, which is why Tory Lane didn't really say too much. But as soon as they heard that, oh, my God, Tory Lane shot Megan Thee Stallion, the, the social media was ready to lynch and crucify Tory Lane. And this is without evidence. I mean, I understand that they were coming back from a party. They were all drinking. They had a, might have had a gun in the car, yada, yada, yada. I understand that. But, um, and the thing is, nobody deserves to get shot. Megan Thee Stallion did not deserve that. She really didn't. I mean, if she if she got shot in the first place. Now, there was a foot injury reported, but there was no report that there was actually a gunshot wound in her foot. So, there's always that. But, I mean, as far as, I mean, the thing is, it really does suck because of the way that men are treated in society. Because if you do anything, say anything, or harm, I mean, I've, like I said, I've, I've actually experienced this for myself. I mean, if, you, if you're if you even accused of doing anything physical to a woman with, without her permission, you're guilty until proven innocent. I mean, as much as I hate to say it. But, yeah, Tory Lanez could have handled that situation a hell of a lot better. Uh, Megan Thee Stallion, I mean... I, what I want to know is why she would try to get back in the car with somebody who allegedly harmed her or assaulted her or shot her or anything of, of that sort. So, for that, the thing is, they all get an epic fail because that is a situation that could have been avoided. And from what I'm hearing, there's a third party involved, which is, you know, Megan Thee Stallion's friend, who apparently Tory Lanez was creeping with on the side or whatever. But, uh, yeah, for all parties involved, Tory, Megan, epic fail. Oh, yeah, and uh, also, another bonus, and then I'm going to cut it off. Cardi B. Now, everybody knows that her biggest claim to fame of 2020 was the, the WAP video with her and Megan Thee Stallion. But she has been cheated on by Offset that we know of at least three times. Offset has cheated on her three times, and yet she still gets back with him. Why are you going to get with, Why are you going to try to pursue a marriage or keep a marriage with somebody who is a known cheater? Why would you try to make an honest man out of him? I mean... I guess in the words of in the words of our Lord and Savior, Messiah Nancy Fuser, he be, I, you know you try to make a husband out of a man that belongs to the streets. So why? And the thing is, this is what a lot of people on social media define as goals or whatever. But uh, I, 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 I mean, at the end of the day, Cardi, you're a grown woman. You know what you're doing. I guess so. But I mean, 
I'm not gonna. I, I, and the thing is, I will leave it for my audience, for everybody watching. I will leave this up to you to decide whether it's a fail or not. But this video is already going up for 15 minutes, so I'm gonna let you guys uh, go. Like I said, I'm gonna do a live tomorrow to talk more about 2020 with these riots, with the rise of OnlyFans, with the rise of TikTok, with the with the quarantine, anything else that I left out. Anyway, guys. What were your biggest fails of this year? What was your biggest letdowns? Also, I will be talking more about the celebrity deaths that hit me the hardest. It's gonna hit me. It's gonna hit you hard like um, like Twisted T. <laughs> anyway, I'm out, guys. Thank you guys for watching. I'll be back with another video soon. Peace out.